Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of BS for Build. In today's episode, we're gonna unveil the second car that we bought for this year's Gambler 500. Then we're gonna go over the build plan for our two week build to prepare this car for gambling. Stay tuned. Before we head outside and I show you guys a new car, I want to take a second out to thank our sponsor. This episode is proudly sponsored by Squarespace. Now you guys know I have a long history of software engineering. I was in that field for many, many years. When I left, when I retired, I had the title of senior software engineer, which means I've spent my fair time writing code for websites. I've probably handwritten dozens, if not maybe a hundred different websites and web apps in my time. But let me tell you guys, the time for doing that is long gone. That is obsolete. The idea of hiring a coder like myself to do that is just not the way to do it. The way to do it is with Squarespace. Squarespace gives you a powerful, beautiful platform to show your new idea, your next big thing to the world. I replaced my own handwritten web website that I wrote for my mom's company, I replaced with Squarespace so she could easily manage it and keep it up to date using their awesome backend platform that is so simple to use. It's just drag, if you can drag and drop, if you can write an email, you can edit, modify, create your own website using Squarespace. I have a new thing coming out in about two weeks and I'm gonna be launching its website supporting it with Squarespace. So you guys will see in about two weeks, I'll announce it on the channel when I say, hey, go to this website to learn more about it, it's gonna be made with Squarespace. So even me, the guy that can handwrite the code super easily with my eyes closed, I don't do it anymore. It's not worth the time. With Squarespace, right off the bat, you have all these beautiful templates, well-designed templates that you can choose from. They give you a good look and feel, and it's a, it's what's called, the coding underneath is called a style sheet. They give you a beautiful style sheet to work with. Um, and then from there, what you see is what you get. So you edit it on, the, on, the, on your computer, and then when you go live, it's gonna look right on people's mobile phones, on their tablets, and on their computers. And then it's not just cross-browser compatible, so it's gonna look good on Chrome and Microsoft Edge and and Firefox, but it's also gonna look good on Mac and PC. If that sounds confusing, that's because these things get really confusing and extremely expensive when you're hiring somebody like me to manage these things, but not with Squarespace. It's all very, very simple. It's all a, like in a one spot, one package where you just make it look good in front of yourself and then you hit publish and you're ready to go. So if you're a person that's ready to share your next move with the world, maybe you're a musician and you're ready to share some of your music out there, or you're an app developer and you're ready to share your new game, or maybe you're a filmmaker like myself and you're gonna share like a new short story or something, you need a website to do that, and Squarespace is the place to do it. So hit the link in the description, guys, or go to squarespace.com slash B is for build. That'll get you started with a free trial and 10% off of your first purchase. We're ready. We're ready to go outside and show you guys the car. All right, with no further ado, I would like to introduce you to the, I believe, the first project on this channel with a name, Jenkins. present to you Jenkins, our new C5 Corvette. Nothing shouts America louder than an ugly ass fiberglass car with a big ass high liter, high capacity V8 engine under the hood. So this, for all of you guys that don't know, is a C5 Corvette. They made them from the mid 90s into the mid 2000s. It's a particularly valued year, I would say, or valuable year, because it's the first of the cars with the LS1 engine and the T56 transmission mounted back here. So this car is a cheap man's, a poor man's Aston Martin. Fiberglass body, V8 mounted up front, transmission mounted to the differential, so you got a transaxle in the rear, 50-50 weight distribution, 345 horsepower, and close to the same amount of torque. A Little bit of history on this car, this car was found at auction. I actually found it one week when it sold for $2,100, but it was an on approval bid and the insurance company did not approve that final price, so it went back up the next week where we won it for $4,100. It looks like the previous driver slid the back end out into a wall. This is a common uh, drifting style accident that you see where the back end is just all shot over that way. But on a fiberglass body, that means real big problems because you got that's all slanted, this whole rear panel is cocked out, this is all flying out too, and then 
uh, back in the front. So it looks like smashed, uh, spun out, hit the back end in the wall. And then what often happens is after you bounce the back off, the front spins back around and he hit the front end as well. Uh, as far as frame damage, we're not seeing any frame damage, but back here you can get, you can peek into a little bit of the um, impact bar being tweaked out, but that's not a big problem. That, that can be replaced, but the frame that it connects to still looks straight, so that's all good. Now, the body is, is pretty banged up in those spots, but we're not going to be using the body anyways, so that doesn't matter to us. What matters is that it's got a great LS1 engine up front, like I mentioned before, and a T56 transmission in the rear, um, and it's low miles. I say it's one of the best bangs for the buck these days because these LS1 engines are strong as all hell. They have an easy line of modifications and upgrades that can be done to them to get high horsepower numbers before you start talking about forced inductions with superchargers or turbochargers, which they can obviously handle those as well. And then you throw on the fact that they have all the plug and play software and tunability and stuff in the whole world. It's probably one of the most supported engines in the world as far as aftermarket parts, software, tuning, all that good stuff. Then, so you got your engine, then you're coming back to your transmission. Like I said, in the back you have a T56 transmission uh, made into the, the differential that powers those rear wheels. Uh, my boy Cletus McFarlane, it just ran a like 8.6 second quarter mile using the stock transmission and stock differential on his car that has a thousand horsepower. So this car, that transmission and that diff is still holding up, getting a thousand horsepower on drag slicks thrown at it and it hasn't broken yet, which is super impressive when you're talking about, that's three times the number that this car comes with from the factory. Jumping into the interior, it is a representation of everything that's wrong about 1990s, early 2000s sports cars in America, made in America sports cars. The interior is not a nice place to be. They all smell the same way. I don't know what that smell is, but it's terrible. Uh, the the, the dash is just a bad joke. Um, it's every, all the, all the buttons are big and bubbly and plasticky and crappy and all like reused. This, this is a reused stereo and a reused, uh, climate control system that they used on so many other cars. So you buy a top of the line sports car with all this amazing engineering and stuff in it. And then you get this presented to you, makes it a terrible place to be. In the nineties, they came out with a Supra that kicks this dashboard's ass. Uh, 10 years later, 20 years later, however long it was since this one was changed out. Uh, the shifter is uh, odd robot leg style square, which I don't know how they found that to be ergonomic. I guess in Detroit they shift like that. The, um, the e-brake is an interesting shape. I actually, I actually don't mind that. It's weird looking, but it's an interesting shape. Uh, but yeah, it's weird. We got some power. Let's see if, let's see if she'll start up. She used to. All right. Now this car is a runs and drives car, but it is not perfect by any means. And you can pretty much hear why. I believe all it is is this pulley right here is super pissed off. So we got to look into ordering a new one of those. I don't even know what that is, if that's the water pump area or what. Uh, definitely want to make sure it's not the water pump that's uh, that matter, or else we'll need to replace that. But that's, as far as from the engine, weird noises that I've found so far, that's the only weird noise over there. In the back, from an engineering standpoint, there's not too much that's wrong other than the crash damage. So we got some body hitting some uh, tire over here. And then it also pushed some of the exhaust pieces off of their hangers. So some of the exhaust pieces are getting scary close to driveline components. So it's kind of rattles and bangs around back there. Something that we're gonna wanna go ahead and fix early on. Other than that though, this seems to be seems to me with a very small amount of time I've spent with it, a perfectly good running and driving 2000 Corvette. Also as an awesome bonus, it's only got 53,000 miles on it. That's one of the big reasons I wanted to pick up this car. I paid a little bit more than I probably had to to get it, but I wanted one that we could have running and driving quickly because for the Gambler, we don't have a lot of time to prepare. But also, I have a lot of plans for this car after the Gambler, so having one that's low mileage that has an engine that can take a little bit of a beating, that's a bonus. So we have this guy. This was our first Gambler purchase. This is a something something Mercedes 240Z killer car that I'm not gonna give away the details for what we're doing with this build 
quite yet. This build starts July 1st. It's gonna be a uh, less than two week build because the Gambler starts on the 13th and this car will be done by then. Now the Corvette was bought because Eric had a dream build to do with this car. Eric's been a Cletus McFarlane fan for a long time. He's also been a Corvette owner for a long time and he loved the XO Cage Corvette style build. And uh, when we started thinking about Corvettes and the Gambler, he thought, what if we built an XO Caged off-road Corvette? And that's what we're gonna build here. This build should be mainly kind of headed off by Eric. I'm hoping to not be spending too much time on it, although who knows, I'll probably be here for every step of the way. Um, but that's the game plan for this build. That's what we're gonna be doing. So this car, uh, you guys have probably seen Cletus McFarland's car of this, and I'll, I'll put a picture of it right here. So when you take all the body panels off of this car, it's it, the engineering supports an exo cage so well. The fuel tanks are actually behind the seats, so they're not underneath down there like in a lot of cars. Um, the frame, it doesn't have strut towers. The suspension is built in an interesting way, so there's not massive strut towers coming through here that you have to worry about keeping. In the back, there's no strut towers at all because they wanted to keep the back slimmer and room for two sets of golf clubs. So it's actually a leaf spring that runs through the back, which isn't helping us at all for the off-road thing. So this car was like designed to be able to use and utilize the chassis for other fun things. Mustang Kyle put a, put a Mustang body on top of one of these. It was either a C5 like ours or a C6. I think it was a C5. Um, and plenty of people have built amazing things from these. So that's why I say it's a platform that you can really, really use. So this one's gonna have multiple lives. The first live life is the Gambler Project though. So that's what we're gonna get started on. Here's a picture of what this car looks like with the body completely stripped off without an exo cage. So you can see that when you remove the things like the fenders and the doors and the everything else, it gets real, real slim. So from there, the plan is to build an exo cage to protect us, the drivers, and maybe make it a more enjoyable place to be, I guess. I don't really know. So I have a tubing bender. We have tubing supplies coming in and we've got all sorts of great stuff for that to build an exo cage onto this frame, this chassis. Um, and then, so it's an interesting thing as far as the research that I've done is the chassis is a bonded chassis with some bonded body stuff. So it's not welded, it's bonded, but I think it's bonded steel and not bonded aluminum like say the Lotus Evora was, which is really interesting. And that's something we're gonna have to look into more when we tear it apart. So then the other thing is how are we going to lift this thing up and get it higher off the ground? So we can, we're going to try and develop a system of modified suspension to lift it up. Um, and what I'm hoping to not have to do is try and not space out the wheels too much. As we learned last year with any of these cars, the problem with putting a, taking a 27 inch wide tire and putting a 33 inch wide tire on here is that you start to run into components of the car that you can't get rid of. So you run into the frame of the car over there or you know we won't have to worry about that up front. But right here, the frame of this car does dive in right about here and could potentially block a big radius tire like we want to put on here. I want to put on some big old knobby dirt tires. But we're gonna work with that as much as we can. We're gonna tear the car down as much as we can and lift it up as much as we can to try and figure out a way to do that. Modify the frame if we have to, if it's possible. And if we can't, Eric is a maniac and what he wants to do is he wants to cut the A-arms, or not cut the A-arms, remove the A-arms here, the A-control arms that come off here and here build his own that are custom that go out to here, extend the steering rack out, extend any of the other control arms out, and basically take the wheels and tires and move them from sitting inboard right about here to being way out here, so then we can fit massive dirt tires on them. Is it possible to do in the time frame? I'm not sure. Is it possible to do on, the, on, a, on a like relatively reasonable budget? I'm not sure because then you have to do custom axles in the back and who knows how that back leaf spring thing will react to us spacing it out really, really far. But custom axles can sometimes cost way past a thousand dollars and I'm not gonna spend half of the money on the car again uh, for the dank memes of having a, having a super wide wheelbase off-road Corvette. But we will find out in the next episode when we tear this thing apart. And my hope is that we can fit an off-road tire on there without building all new control arms for the entire suspension rigging. That's my hope. And then from there, obviously, we're gonna have um, some protective stuff under on the underside. We'll, we'll get some quarter inch thick steel and I, I can't remember what those things are called. Stuff like this, protective stuff like that on the front and on the bottom side of the car. So as we're driving over boulders and stuff like that, we won't blow any fuel lines or brake lines or anything else like that. So that is the game plan for the Corvette Gambler car. And let me reiterate that that is just the first iteration of its life. I have a plan 
to use it for another thing that is gonna be so fantastic. I cannot wait to build it, although I'm probably gonna have to wait a while to build it. Um, let me say that I do know that every time that we do this type of stuff, um, interrupting another build, people get panicked, they get upset, they think that it means that, oh, we're just gonna go over there and do that, we're never gonna come back to the other build. First of all, we're only working one more day on this until July when we'll start up actually until the event and that's gonna be a 13 day span. Um, but, you know, interrupting the Datsun, I know that you guys are very invested in this uh, build and you wanna see it through to fruition, but we will. Just have faith, we will do it. If you look back over our YouTube channel's span, I have never bought or started a build that we did not finish. Well, I might have bought a build that we didn't finish, but we never started a build that we did not finish. So, you know, we've built over 10 cars. We've never started a build and not seen it all the way through to the end. So keep that in mind. I have absolutely no plans on, you know, not doing this car. But the reason that I get hesitant to do these really amazing, like, long-term builds that are gonna take three, four, five, six months is because then I feel like the channel gets siloed down in this thing and we can't take a break to have any fun. And that's just not the way it should be. We should stop, we should take a break, we should goof off, we should enjoy cars for what they're made for sometimes, which is having fun. So that's what we're doing um, You know, tomorrow. We're gonna be tearing the thing down and that's the purpose of these two cars. Although I spent a ton of money to have fun, um, I do have a game plan of how to get our money back out of them in the end too, so don't worry about that. But uh, just please have a little bit of faith. We're not ditching the Datsun build because we stopped working on it for you know 10 days, 15 days or whatever. Um, sometimes other cars just either need to be worked on, like for instance the Evora will need to be worked on soon. Um, I know a lot of you guys want to see it back on the channel and I want to be able to use it again, which means I'd like to get it back into perfect condition, which it's not in right now. So that means interrupting these builds, but we'll always come back to them and we'll always see them through to fruition. So I just hope that you guys understand that and I know that you feel invested in it. I understand that. We'll always come back and I hope that you join us for the other stuff that we're doing too because that's how we just keep the whole, the whole thing moving along, right? Okay guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're looking forward to it. Project Jenkins, we're tearing it down tomorrow. I'll see you then. Peace!